G'day, Blade Dickheads, Vaping Bogan, back again for another Ridgy Didge review. Hope you're all doing good as bloody gold. Got a new RTA, a new one from Mr. Mike Vapes. What's up, peeps? <laughs> it's called The Eclipse. It's a collaboration between Mike and Yacht Vape. Odd name for a company that uh, makes e-cigarettes, but anyway. It's a little 24mm kind of flavour chaser uh, single coil RTA. I've got it sitting atop the uh, Ascent SE from ZQ. I have previously said that this was a single 21700 mod. My apologies, dickheads. It's a single 18650. I'll be getting a review up on it pretty soon. Got a nice little bit of matchy match action going on here, Mike. Bit of gun metal on gun metal. So short and stocky, kind of like the man who designed it. <laughs> Sorry, Mike. <laughs> really like this little thing though. It's uh, not your mouth to lung kind of single coil. It's definitely a, a direct lung single coil. Very uh, stout and uh, slammed in terms of the uh, chamber in there. So good for those that like uh, flavor over vapor. Let's take it for a little ripperoo. I've got a, uh, a 0.23 ohm uh, little alien coil in here. Really nice smooth airflow on this one. It's got some honeycomb action on the inside there. I'm gonna take you through the bits and bobs. We'll do a little wicking tutorial on it in a moment, but before we can get there, let's talk about a fucking beer. Got another IPA from Stone Brewing. This is Never Ending Haze IPA. Love me a hazy IPA and love me some uh, Stone fucking beer. There's a lot never ending about IPAs around Stone, beginning with Stone IPA being one of the very first and most popular West Coast style IPAs on the planet. To our celebrated explorations of double IPAs, session IPAs, fruited IPAs, and the ultra fresh triple IPAs. They're an integral part of our legacy. Plus there's the often said, but not actually true, comments from some that all Stone does is IPAs. Ha, yes, we may love them passionately and perpetually be on the quest for IPA Nirvana, but this particular one actually happened onto the scene to aid your noble pursuit of never ending good times. Well, it's a whole lot of beer waffle, but uh, they usually don't disappoint with their IPAs. Uh, brewed over in uh, Richmond, Virginia and in uh, uh, Escondido, California, uh, coming in at a, a pretty fucking easy drinking four bloody percent. Let's just see how she fucking tastes. Let's drink a beer. Let's drink it here. Well, there you go, dickheads. Cloudy but very amber, resinous looking complexion on that one. Oh, certainly smells like a stone IPA. Got that very hoppy, very sort of uh, piney aroma. Fucking cheers. That's nice. A little lighter than some of their other IPAs, I've got to say. It's got that sort of uh, piney uh, and herbal aroma, but being maybe the 4%, it's a little bit lighter. It almost tastes a bit like a session IPA. I don't know whether it's uh, meant to be like that. Maybe they should have called it the uh, never-ending Hayes Session IPA, but that tastes to me a lot more like a, an easy drink and kind of throw a few back uh, IPAs. The 4% certainly would allow you to do that. Very nice and tropical though. Got that hoppy, that pineness there, but not nearly as jory, if you know what I mean. Doesn't have that real hoppy kind of uh, feel in the back of your mouth. Kind of getting quite a bit of a tropical feel there. Maybe a little bit of citrus as well. Sort of like passion fruit, pineapple, that kind of thing. Bloody tasty though, not disappointing at all. Well, let's pair it up with a fucking liquid. I find IPAs usually pair pretty fucking well with cola liquid. So we're gonna go a bit of Rebel. This is Cola Slush. It's pretty bang on a cola slushy flavor. It's a bit different to my own Kuron Cola. It's got a lot more of that sort of syrupy kind of cola taste to it, almost like you've melted a slushy and you've got that sort of uh, syrupy cola in the bottom. Pretty on point with that whole sort of slushy kind of thing. A little bit of cooling in there does give it that kind of icy slush feel. Should go well though, I think. The, uh, the caramel and the uh, sort of citrus notes of cola usually go quite well with an IPA. Yeah, that's nice. That's fucking pretty good. The uh, the piney herbal notes in the beer kind of giving the uh, the cola a little bit of a, a fizzy feel that it didn't have before. Getting it a little bit sort of fizzy cola with the uh, the mix of the beer there. That's nice.
Yeah, the citrus really coming out now. As I said, cola usually has a fair bit of citrus in it, along with obviously caramels and things like that. And that goes really fucking well with the uh, the high piney notes of an IPA. The caramel multi sort of flavors as well, also kind of coming out with the uh, addition of the cola. That's a bloody good pairing once again. As I've always said, get yourself a fucking IPA and uh, grab yourself a cola liquid and uh, you'll have a good time. But enough waffling over this fucking shit. Let's get down the up and bloody close. As I said, we're going to break the tank down, have a good squiz at Mike's creation, and then we'll do a quick little wicking tutorial as well. Let's have a sticky beak. All oh, fucking righty then. So this is the packaging your Eclipse will come in. Got Mr. Mike down in the bottom there. We get your tank, bubble glass section, an alternative 810 size drip tip and a 510 adapter, bag of spare O-rings and grub screws, coil cutting guide, a Clapton coil and some cotton, a user manual and an Allen key wrench. But let's get into it. So as I said earlier, it's 24 millimeters in diameter, but it's quite short. So it's got a bit of a stocky look to it. I really like the overall design that Mike's got going on here. You've got some sort of ribbing kind of line work going around it up the top and the bottom matches really nicely. And uh, the drip tip that they've gone with also has kind of a similar sort of line uh, action which I think looks really good. They do give you that alternative drip tip. So the one pre-installed, they both have, I think, pretty similar uh, bore to them, but uh, this one's obviously a little bit narrower on the gob. If you like something a little bit wider and maybe a bit shorter, uh, we've seen this sort of vase style drip tip before, but they give you one of those. They do have an O-ring on the inside of the top of the tank, so your custom drip tips will fit in there, no problems. Uh, there's a look at the diameter. Yeah, as I said, I don't think there's any difference in how much airflow gets through, just a, a little bit different shape. It's a top fill system, nice quarter turn, easy access, just twist and uh, off she comes. You got plenty of uh, access there with three big sort of uh, kidney shaped holes and uh, have found no issues getting it on and off. You got a little engraving on the chimney. I like it. They've kept it very simple. Just a little E there for Eclipse. And then you've got your uh, AFC ring down the bottom here. It's a simple Cyclops system. They have gone with a, a big open cut here and uh, you need to sort of pull well, you can use the Allen key wrench they include to get to the post holes directly through the AFC. But if you want to uh, get something a bit fatter in there, like your own uh, Allen key wrenches, take the AFC ring off. You just twist it to the closed position and then it pulls off. I found uh, that out the hard way. <laughs> Initially, I was trying to stick my fucking uh, larger Allen key wrench through this hole and, and it doesn't fit. So uh, <laughs> I was like looking a bit stupid on my live build stream uh, until someone pointed out that the AFC ring comes off. And uh, once you take that out, then it is much easier to get a larger tool in there and um, adjust your uh, post holes. We'll have a look at that closer when we get to the deck. But um, you access the post holes or the post screws via the AFC ring, which is a kind of a clever way of doing it, keeping the low profile sort of feature on this tank rather than having to have the, the posts up higher, just access it via the uh, airflow down the bottom. It is a dual hole system, if you are wondering. You've got the usual engravings on the bottom there, Eclipse, mic Vapes, and uh, a serial number. You have got a hybrid safe 510 pin. And what I mean by that, if you haven't heard it enough already, is this gold pin here is sticking out further than the stainless steel threads. If your atomizer, whether it's this one or something else doesn't have a protruding pin from the threads, do not fucking use it on a hybrid mechanical mod. So it'll give you two mils of capacity with the straight glass. It also comes with a, uh, a bubble section, which takes it up to 3.5. Let's have a look at the deck though. So you just grab the top and twist it off. You will find that the glass stays nicely in uh, the top so you can access it with your, your tank sort of fairly full with liquid. You got a pretty condensed chamber there. It's um, a little bit domed, a little bit of a dome shape to it, but it's fairly flat because it is uh, very, very slammed and, and condensed, this uh, whole deck and, and chamber. So having a look at the deck, it's uh, kind of sunken. You've got your uh, post holes down in the bottom there, and then you've got airflow coming through the side here. So it's going to come in through these holes, sort of go in on an L shape. So it's going to come in horizontal to your coil. You've got four post holes there, and that gives you the option to have a clockwise wrapped or anti-clockwise wrapped coils. You're just going to put one leg in um, this left hand side and one leg in the right hand side you can see the uh, insulator there dividing it into two posts essentially so make sure that you don't put 
both legs in uh, the one side because you won't make a circuit. You've got to have one on this side and one on that side or vice versa. And uh, yeah, you just want to put your coil down in there. There's a little divot just on the edge of the threads there, kind of guide you down into that space. Uh, and as I said, if you're using your own uh, Allen key tool, it's a 1.5 millimeter Allen key grub screw in there. It's best to take off that uh, AFC ring so that you can get in there and uh, wind out those screws. Nice bit of honeycomb action in there, giving you real sort of smooth airflow. And it's very condensed, as I said. You want to have your coil basically in line with the top of those posts. We'll have a look at my build shortly. Your wicking ports down here and here. Reasonable amount of uh, space there for your cotton. And uh, it's going to basically come through that little slit on either side. So very slammed, very short and condensed little area. Once you've got that top cap on there, as you can see, it's going to be sitting just a fraction above the, uh, the top of these airflow posts. It does come in about six different fucking colors. Yacht Vape were kind enough to send on all of them to me, so I'll be giving away the extras to my Patreons. Obviously, we've been having a look at this sort of matte silver, which is kind of like that sandblasted finish we've seen on uh, a few stainless steel products before. The one that I've been using is the Gunmetal, just a darker tone, but a matte finish also. Then you have uh, things like Rainbow, always a staple. People seem to love the uh, the heat-treated rainbow finish. Good old gold as well, which has got a shiny polished to it. You get your classic polished stainless steel, and then there's also a, uh, a matte black. Uh, they all look pretty nice. You've got plenty of choice there. I do like it when uh, they give you plenty of fucking options and all nice colors too. Certainly a fan of uh, the matte uh, grays that the sandblasted stainless steel. I think that looks really good and the, the gun metal matched up perfectly with my uh, fucking SE mod here. Very similar sort of gray. So let's have a look at the coil that I've been using. As I said, you can access uh, your deck with uh, liquid in the tank. Just tip it upside down, make sure it all runs to the top and uh, then grab the glass section. Don't grab your top cap because you'll undo that and you'll end up fucking leaking liquid through the uh, through the opening but you can access your deck pretty fucking easily um, by tipping your tank upside down uh, there we go i'll need to uh, take this wick out and give it a bit of a clean and then we'll put a new one in clean it up get some of that caramelization off give it a little strum make sure it's all heating nice and evenly again Oop. There we go. So the call that I've been using in here comes from M Turk. Shout out to you, brother. I miss you. Hopefully we get to catch up at an expo when all this shit is done and dusted. Uh, it's his uh, triple 27 gauge Nichrome Aliens. So three strands of 27 gauge wrapped in 36 gauge. Dual coil normally comes out at 0.11. This came out exactly what you would expect a single to, which is 0.22. And uh, really nice little 2.5 millimeter in a diameter beautifully crafted alien now uh you could go a three millimeter i did place a three millimeter coil in there initially um, but it looked fairly tight so i thought 2.5 gonna suit a little bit better in terms of allowing maximum airflow around the uh the coil itself so you could go a three but I would recommend a 2.5. I just think it fits in there nicer and allows you to get plenty of airflow around that coil. And so you can run it at a decent wattage, but also get plenty of air if that's what you like. I don't know whether Mike intended it to be that way, but uh, I'm going to say 2.5 is optimum. As you can see there, the top of my coil is sitting just around about the top of those post fraction higher. I wouldn't go any higher than that or you risk hitting the uh, the top of the chimney, but um, really easy to uh, put your coil in. As you can see, one leg in one hole, one diagonally across in the other, and uh, it's a piece of pistol wick, which is uh, what we're gonna do right fucking now. <laughs> And there you go, dickheads. That's how I've been fucking doing it. You want to cut your cotton basically in line with this stainless steel ring here. 
the one in from the O-ring. You don't need much length on it because the coil set quite low in there and the, uh, the juice wells are right there. So that'll be plenty. And uh, tuck it in, make sure it's sort of free from the threads. Otherwise it's gonna catch when you screw it on there. So make sure you tuck those out of the way. <laughs> like fucking so and we are good to go. And that'll about fucking do us for the up and close tickets. Let's jump back up top, talk pros, cons, prices, and everything fucking else. So there it fucking is, dickheads, the Eclipse, Mr. Mike Vapes and Yacht Vape. Nice little fucking single coil banger, hey? We're seeing plenty of single coil RTAs uh, in the last year or so. It's very much the uh, the flavor of the RTA season. Let's talk about the pros and bloody cons, though. What do I like? What do I fucking dislike? Well, flavor is a, a fucking big thing on this guy. Being a single coil, being a small condensed chamber, tons and tons of flavor. Reminds me a lot, in a lot of ways, of the Druger, but particularly the flavor and the way that it vapes. If you've had a Druger RTA uh, from last year, I think it was, it is pretty much the same experience that I've got here. Whipped out my Druger just to see what the airflow is like and a little bit smoother, a little bit smoother on the airflow than the Druger. Maybe a little quieter. Yeah, just a tad smoother, tad quieter, but in terms of flavor and the amount of uh, vapor and the coils that you're gonna be putting in this thing, it's very, very similar to the Druger RTA, which was one of my favorite RTAs from last year. So yeah, if you're into that sort of style of uh, single coil, medium wattage flavor banging, then uh, this sort of thing is right up your bloody alley. So flavor, mwah, very fucking well done there, Mike. Love it. Uh, able to wick pretty fucking decently and uh, at reasonably high wattages for a single coil. I've been running it consistently at 60 watts with this coil. I think that's kind of just perfect where I like it. Look, you could go a little bit more. Let's see, bump it up to, to 70 watts. Three decent pulls there and it's not really drying out on me. So you could definitely go like a 70 watt, maybe even push it a little higher, but I don't think you need to. With a 0.2 ohm coil like I've got in here, 60 is just nice. It's warm, it's flavorsome, it's not too fucking uh, hot. It's just fucking Kellogg's, mate. Bloody good. So uh, in terms of performance, flavor and smoothness and uh, cloud production, wicking, it's all fucking grouse. It's got good build quality as well for something that's not super expensive. It's a cheap little Chinese RTA. Pretty impressed with the, uh, the quality on it. Tolerances are all nice, top cap comes off easily and uh, all the threading no worries there. Putting it back together, no issues. Building and wicking it, piece of fucking piss. If you want to see me installing the coils, then uh, hit the link in the description to the live build stream I did last week. I set this thing up. You can see me putting the coils in there, but because it's got four post holes, it's easy enough to just drop your little uh, legs in there and uh, wicking it. Well, you see how I did it. Pretty fucking standard for this sort of uh, simple single coil deck. Overall capacity, not bad for a slammed little fucking RTA. Two mils, kind of what you expect with this sort of thing. 3.5 with the bubble. Again, no complaints there. You can't expect something of this size to have a, a massive capacity. And certainly at 60 watts, it's not too bad. You are refilling it uh, reasonably frequently, but it's not like every fucking four drags, you gotta fucking top it up. So not bad on the capacity. I like it with a straight glass. I think it looks really good with the straight. I'll go a, a smaller capacity on um, a straight glass if it looks nicer. So uh, yeah, overall aesthetics, I'm a, a big fan of it. I think the simple design, I like the lines, the simple circuit the lines around it, uh, minimal logo and uh, and branding, uh, two different drip tips, they look quite nice, both of them there, and the fact that they give you a couple of choices, always nice. So a couple of thumbs up there on the aesthetics, it's a silly thing, but it's important to me that my shit looks good, and I like a clean, minimal fucking design, that's what they've got here. So plenty of fucking pros, cons, Honestly, there's nothing here that I have an issue with. Uh, as I said, it's not a huge capacity, but that's what you expect with one of these sort of smaller flavor chasing RTAs, single coil, etc. So I can't really say that's a con, but that's about all I could really fucking say, Mike. Honestly, I don't have much to uh, to whinge about. Um, initially, I was like, oh, I can't get my fucking Allen key through the, uh, the airflow slot, but you take the airflow slot off and that's not really an issue anymore. So that was a, a con that so solved itself <laughs> once I figured out how it was going. I honestly, 
Uh, can't think of anything that I would say has been done poorly here. It, it is a great little fucking RTA. So uh, what are they going to set you back? Well, being yacht vape made in China, they're not expensive. You're looking at about $30 US. I've seen them on uh, some popular sites. Uh, you can pick them up in the UK for around about the uh, 30 pound, 28.99, I think it was. And uh, in Australia, I have seen them going for around about uh, 48 50 schmackaroos, which is, uh, again, not a bad price. Uh, plenty of colors to choose from there, which is always good. So uh, yeah, look, if you're looking for a, a new single coil flavor chaser RTA, uh, smooth airflow, great flavor, this thing is a, a definitely list maker. So uh, with that being said, I'm gonna get the fuck out of here. Well done, Mike. Hope you're doing fucking well over there, mate. We'll catch up soon when expos are back. So I'll put the usual Instagram and Facebook links down in the description if you wanna see what this fucking idiot gets up to outside of the YouTube videos. If you wanna support my channel, please do. Hit the like, hit the subscribe button, always helps me out. Make sure you turn on that little bell icon there and maybe you'll get notifications from YouTube. But if you really wanna keep me behind the fucking lens, then think about hitting some of my support links. As I say, every bloody video, this is an independent channel which means I don't take payments for making reviews. There's no sneaky jumping the queue fees or any kind of sponsorships. I wanna make sure that you get a truly unbiased opinion on a product, but to keep that up, a bit of public support is how I pay the bills. So hit my Patreon page, there's special content. I vlog on there each week you won't see here on YouTube, as well as all the extra gear I give away to my patrons once a month. We've got five tanks there, we're going off to five lucky fuckers at the end of uh, August, because those dickheads, they keep me doing my bloody thing. So fucking cheers. But if you can't, that's all good. Sit back, sub on me fucking dicks off, all your bloody tits off. I couldn't give a shit what it is you're vaping on, whether it's single coil, dual coil, slammed, or fucking huge. As long as you're not banging the bloody bungers, that's all that matters. Cheers for tuning in. Cheery fucking oh. Mr. Mike Vapes. <laughs> For another Ridgy Dig. Mike and Yacht Vape, Yucked Vape. <laughs> I think it's Yacht Vape, but uh, odd name for a company. Uh, you can take it on your boat. It's a boat vape. Yacht Vape, the uh, oddly named company. Don't know if it's the vaping for the sailors, but uh, uh, what are you talking about, Bogan, you idiot? Make sure you turn on that little L Make sure you turn on that little bell icon there and hit uh, fuck me. Ha <laughs> ha.